what's going on everyone so we have a new spoiler card for shadows of the galaxy in ig 11 now we've been getting about one of these every single day so what i'm going to start doing for the channel is actually most likely uploading twice a day because i do want to continue to do my normal videos i have some things about you know some of the card pricings and and, and more deck text coming which uh, one of them is going to be that vader blue deck that i have been trying to build in person although we had a little bit of a snag i'll say IG-11, on the other hand, we're getting a lot of these new cards, and they are sweet to cover, so I do want to continue to talk about them. Starting us off today with IG-11, and, well, we only got one today. This one looks pretty sweet. We have a five-resource aggression unit, no villainy, no heroism, six-five droid bounty hunter. If this unit would be captured, defeat him and deal three damage to each enemy ground unit instead, and on attack, you may deal three damage to a damaged ground unit. So what do I think about this card? Well, first off, 6-5 five for 5 is actually a pretty reasonable stat line. The 5 toughness is really, really important. If we look at some of the comparable options in that category, we have things like Bosk, we have things like uh, Zeb, we have things like Steadfast Battalion, all of which are worse stats than IG-11 here, right? 4-5, five, 5-5, five, 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 uh, five, five, those are all a little bit worse. The question is, is the ability that you're getting from this guy comparable to a lot of those other options, right? Zeb, I think, is the easiest one to compare to, as this is in the same color. Zeb is a heroism unit, which is pretty important for things like for a cause and, and, and a rebel tag, which is also very important. But they kind of do something pretty similar, which is on them attacking, they could potentially go ahead and deal additional damage to something else. Now, in Zeb's case, he must live the attack and defeat an enemy in order for you to get the trigger. And so what makes Zeb powerful is the fact that you can go ahead and ECL him out, kill something, and then potentially kill something else. But that's really the only case that he's really good in. IG-11, on the other hand, you get the on attack trigger, similar to Boba Fett at three resources, where you're going to be dealing three damage. In, in Boba Fett's case, it's to an exhausted unit uh, that wasn't played that turn. And in IG-11's case, it's to a damaged unit. But damaging a unit is very, very easy to do in certain styles of decks, right? The immediate thing that I think of is things like uh, Palpatine and Darth Vader. If you're able to go ahead and deal just a couple of damage here and there and get the initial train started, I think this card could be very powerful as a more mid rangey control the board threat. As a 6 5 is very difficult to trade into. There's not really a lot of cards that trade up against it, right? Even if you think of something like Gorilla Attack Pod, this thing just kills Gorilla Attack Pod and lives, which is pretty crazy. When you start thinking about like very, very uh, high costed threats, things like Avenger, things like Darth Vader, yeah, this thing doesn't trade into it, but we're considering like two or three additional resources up compared to IG-11 or like Reinforcement Walker, for example. Yeah, those things are gonna kill IG-11 and live, but we're talking like seven, eight resources versus five. So I don't know if that's necessarily fair. Anything below five, this thing is going to trade, or five or below is going to trade with and potentially live. And if you consider leaders, which is a really important one, this thing lives through basically every leader that you're gonna be deploying on four or five, right? If you consider Leia, if you consider Boba Fett, if you consider um, basically anything that comes out on five, this thing is going to live and potentially even kill your opponent's leaders, which is crazy, right? That six point of power actually does do some major things, especially against something like, for example, Leia, who's a three six, right? You can actually just kill Leia straight up, which is really, really powerful. The tags here, droid bounty hunter. What's interesting about droid is, uh, and I've heard this a few times with some of the different people in the community, and I tend to lean this way as well, I feel like droid is actually going to be more of a negative tag than a positive tag as we have so many different potential options, especially when Republic comes, the Republic set to have like clone theme cards or like, you know, ion grenades or some sort of thing that, you know, droid poppers, as, as we say from Clone Wars, something that interacts with droids in a negative way for the droid. Something like Force Lightning where you need something else in order to get something. In this case, you would need a droid enemy unit in order for you to get the big value. And so I don't know if that's gonna be a positive. Bounty Hunter, on the other hand, well, this is going to be something that uh, 
I do think is very, very likely to be a very positive tag in the next set as Bounty Hunter, Underworld, that type of stuff has, seems to be the focus. Uh, Mandalorian, Bounty Hunter, and Underworld are the three tags that I'm gonna be looking out for. So overall, I think this could be a very powerful, more mid-rangey uh, threat. I don't know if you're gonna really be playing this in the more aggressive decks as if you look at the more options that we have, like. I don't really see this fitting in anywhere at the current moment. Like I'd rather be playing Zeb over IG-11 because of the fact that it's going to give you that heroism tag. There's one other thing that I do want to mention, and this is the fact that if this unit would be captured, I didn't really talk about this one too much when I was talking about, you know, the, the overall card. And that's because it's your opponent's choice. You don't just defeat IG-11 and get this three damage to each enemy ground unit. It's not how it works. It's if this unit would be captured. And generally speaking, as far as we've seen, you're not really going to be targeting your own units with something that's capturing them, right? I could see something really cool where, you know, similar to something like a magic where you're blinking something, but, you know, you kind of seal this guy underneath something that you captured it with, and then you kill that thing with the trigger with three damage, and then it returns to the battlefield. That could be something pretty cool. But as far as we've seen right now, the only thing that really capture needs to be kind of considered for is the fact that your opponent can capture this. And if they don't want to capture it, then they don't capture it and you're not going to get this trigger. So I don't think that's a super reliable trigger, which is why I, I mainly focus on the on attack and the stats that IG-11 has, because I'm not really seeing a situation where you're going to be getting that three damage by capturing the bounty hunter. I suppose if you are, you know, playing in a more um, mid rangey style and their removal is capture oriented, you could potentially counter that by, you know, killing your opponent's units or just deal a bunch of damage to your opponent's units while forcing them to capture this IG-11 because he is a powerful threat. But again, I don't really see that giving you too much value in most games. So overall, I think IG-11 is going to be a solid card. I also think this card is going to be really good in limited, but you know, I'm not sure how many people play limited out there. I know it's one of my favorite formats, but he's also an uncommon, which is kind of crazy. Again, I feel like these cards are quite strong for being the rarities that they are. The, the rare that we saw Dr. Evazon is kind of insane, right? 3-3 shielded with that bounty. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what the rares we're going to get in Shadows of the Galaxy are. But overall, I think IG-11 is a pretty solid card, and I wouldn't be surprised if this saw some play, especially if we see some more bounty hunter synergies, right? If we could see some synergies with like an aggressive bounty hunter deck, I could see this doing some good work in that type of style. So we'll see. And let me know what your thoughts are on IG-11 down below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all for the next one.